Hello everybody. The Warriors blew out the Dallas Mavericks in a refreshingly not close game. I wanted to talk about the relationship between Steph Curry and Gary Payton II. Steph Curry clearly loves passing to Gary Payton II because GP2 is a really good finisher and he's really smart about cutting to the basket in a timely way and catching and finishing. And so here's a good example. This is a super common action the Warriors run. We've got the ball up here in the high passing spot. Steph is going to run out to the perimeter. Gary Payton II is going to set a pin in screen. This defender has to decide, is he going to continue to follow Steph because he's likely to run into the screen? And probably the cleanest thing is if this defender will switch out, if this defender will switch to the screen. Steph's man stays with them. Luka Doncic stays with Steph because no one ever got fired for following Steph Curry. GP2 very wisely says, no one's guarding me now. I see this basket, I know how to dunk the ball. And he cuts baseline. Clean feed by Steph. Nice one-handed finish. Quick check-in. Damian Lee is going to demonstrate the warrior standard signal for, hey, you just dunked on some guy's head. He's just going to pat himself on the head. And that's not to be confused for the signal for the head tap play. You can tell the difference because of the context. For some reason, Maxi Kleber is pressuring Steph I don't think he got the memo that Steph can't shoot anymore through some combination of injured hands, messed up rhythm, and just plain bad luck. So Steph will pretty easily just run by him. In the background here, GP2 being guarded, sort of, but his man just lets him run through to the corner. As is inevitable, Steph whips by Kleber, and that means someone from the Mavericks has to rotate. Dorian Finney-Smith seems to be pointing, saying, hey, you're it. So this low man defender has to rotate to meet Steph's drive. This is not Steph's first rodeo, and he immediately sees that this defender is coming to him. GP2 also sees that his so-called defender is rotating, and so, of course, he does a baseline cut. Steph really sees this all unfolding, and he tries to dribble close enough to the man to force him to fully rotate to him and give GP2 the space. And that's just a nice little bounce pass. I really like that backwards dunk. Now with all of the great things that GP2 brings to the table, the guy is a great cutter, good catcher, great finisher. He's even worked up his three-point shot so that he can shoot at a reasonable level. He's shooting 37.7% right now from three. Excellent hands to steal balls, really feisty on-ball defense, pretty reasonable off-ball defense. So you might think we should just start. GP2 and we should just close with him this guy is so good and I think he might get there eventually but at this moment I think the coaching staff doesn't think he's ready and part of it is just that he hasn't been playing with the starters and the closers and so he doesn't know the playbook well, for instance let's go back to this Indiana game where Steph Curry completely lost his temper down the stretch because his team was not executing basic stuff on offense so after this game, Anthony Slater asks Steph why he was getting on Gary Payton the second, and here's Steph's response. Our execution on simple stuff that we know is our kind of bread and butter and plays that we run every time, we didn't execute well. So it was a dead possession where we came down, I, I called a play, we didn't execute it well. And uh, that's where us as players have to keep each other accountable uh, to the little things that we can control. You know, you can't control making or miss, missing or making shots, but you can control execution. And So what was the play that Steph was trying to call? In order to understand that, we have to back up a couple games. So this is a play that I've made plenty of videos about called Head Tap. The play always starts the same. The man with the ball enters the pass to the, to the wing, and then he's going to come down here and do some stuff that I'll explain in a second. The ball is going to swing back on top through the middle and then to the main passer over here so whoever's starting off in this corner has to step out over here and receive the ball because what's going to happen most of the time is the initial passer is going to come all the way down and set this cross screen for Andrew Wiggins and so then Wiggins comes across and the ball's gotten over here and the ball just goes over to Wiggins so this is a play the Warriors 
run almost every game and it's usually pretty routine. The problem in this game is that even though the game just started, Devon Looney got two super early fouls and that meant that he had to leave and so GP2 is now in the starting lineup all of a sudden and he's just not used to running this play. Okay, everything looks like it's going according to plan. Steph is coming down here. He's about to set a cross screen for Wiggins. And the ball's swinging across. And yo, what's happening here? There's there's nobody here. And so GP2 is really supposed to be here. And he's he doesn't realize it. He's still stuck off screen over here. So <laughs> Steph kind of comes over here and he's lost a little bit of enthusiasm for setting this cross screen. It's like, uh... Wait, what, what's going on? Is this play dead or do we do this? Andre, he's pointed GP2, that man, you gotta step over here and come get the ball. Wiggins, you're gonna see him also start to point like, hey man, you gotta go and get the ball. There, you see Wiggins is pointing his finger. Hey man, get over there. So GP2 finally comes across. Steph sets his cross screen, Wiggins come across, and then there's the entry. So this play does end up going off, but it's pretty clear GP2 had no idea what he was supposed to be doing on the play. Wiggins decides to just make this a proper post up. And he finishes a sweet little hook shot. And all's well that ends well, right? Question mark. So the Indiana game was a few days later, and the lineups have been scrambled because Draymond is not around. Clay's in and out of the lineup, people are injured. So these lineups are not completely used to playing with each other. And so we find GP2 is in the closing lineup here in crunch time. Steph calls a play, he's gonna dribble over here and you're gonna see him pat himself on the head. There we go. There he's patting himself on the head a couple times to make sure everyone knows that this is head tap. And for this to be head tap, he needs Clay to step up to receive the ball and for GP2 to come over here and for the ball to swing across to GP2 because Andrew Wiggins will eventually come across the lane and want the pass to come to him. You might notice though that GP2 is just clearing out and he's not hanging around the passing spot. Steph did make things a little bit funny by not waiting for Clay to come up and relay the pass across. He just shortcutted it by passing it to Looney. So Steph is going to come across and set this cross screen for Wiggins. But he's going to notice, hey, what is going on? My guy GP2 is not in the passing space. He really has to be over here. And so Steph is going to just start waving his hands, saying, hey, you got to go over there. And that was a really angry flick. So GP2 is like, oh, oh man, I'm messing this play up. In the meantime, time's a wasting. So Clay says, all right, fine. Let's turn this into something else. I'm going to come and get the ball. Looney, in the meantime, is kind of hopeful that something good will happen on this side. GP2 eventually pops out, but that ship has sailed. Looney says, all right, I'm going to just hand this off to Clay. Wiggins has been left out to dry here. He's like, that was my feature play, man. Head tap. So everyone's just improvising now. There's the handoff, Clay's running. In the background over here, GP2 says, well, I guess I'll just pin in for Steph. No one ever got fired for screening for Steph. And then Looney tries a little short roll here and Clay tries a little pass. And it kind of doesn't go anywhere. Intercepted and the Pacers come down and score. And let's check in on how the Warriors are running this play a couple days later. This is against Utah. Jordan Poole gets the ball. In the game video, you can hear Poole yell, head tap. They're the team in the league that... So there's the waving around. Damian Lee's going to get the message and go, oh, I need to be over here. Even though they started off in the wrong places, they are going to make it to the right place. So I, I hope we got the pattern of this play. The ball handler is going to come down here and set a cross screen for Wiggins. And then the ball is going to swing back across the top. GP2 is pretty deep right now. The play has started. It'd be kind of nice if he had come out to receive the ball. He does eventually figure out when the ball swings across and Damian Lee starts pointing saying, hey man, you got to be over here. And then he says, oh yeah, I'll step out. Pool with the cross screen. Wiggins does something subtle with this play. He steps way out to receive the ball to try to pull Gobert out of the paint. Wiggins just faces up and goes. 
And little power move there. He drives and takes the contact from Gobert and in fact gets Gobert bumping backwards so he can just have a nice calm layup. So that's kind of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Gary Payton the second, all through the lens of that one play. He's really promising. I still think he can make an impact even as a spot starter or spot closer, but in order to do that, he's got to solidify his knowledge of the playbook. I can't help talking about one more play. On the rebound, the Pacers just lose track of who their matchups are. So two men, including super rookie Chris Duarte over there, are going to go to Jordan Poole, and that's going to automatically leave someone open. Indiana tries adjusting on the fly. This defender veers to try to cover Steph, but unfortunately this guy is already rotated to Steph, so Steph just makes a simple pass. That means this defender has to rotate to Andrew Wiggins. And who was this fellow guarding? He was guarding GP2 in the corner. So GP2 with his well-timed, beautiful baseline cut. Steph throws, I don't know, we're gonna have to do an audit to see if that was a proper no-look pass. Oof. All right, let's see if this is a proper no-look pass. I don't know, I, I give this credit as a no-look pass. Like Steph is looking that away where GP2 was, but in fact GP2 is in the middle of cutting. So Steph freezes this defender because the defender thinks Steph is passing to the corner when in fact he's whipping this no-look pass to GP2. Beautiful. There's a little subtle bump here on the hip from defender which gives Gary Payton an extra quarter second of hang time which makes this dunk extra beautiful. This stare down was unnecessary, but it was super memorable. And this whole scratching the head it seems like a variation of the Warriors uh, patting the head when you dunk on someone. It's kind of like a combination of, oh, did I just dunk on your head? Was that your cranium that I just threw the ball off of? But anyway, GP2 getting the technical meant that there was no technical free throw. And then GP2 missed the and one free throw, which hurts a lot in a game that went to overtime for reasons that are too stupid to go into. But anyway, my favorite thing about this entire exchange is not the head scratching, which is definitely provocative, but once Vitaze comes over, you have Looney mean mugging the camera and behind Jordan Poole sneaks into the picture to back up his guy GP2. Usually someone comes in to back up your guy by uh, offering to separate them so you can do a hold me back, I'm a tough guy kind of move. But instead, Jordan Poole comes in and shows his 100% support of GP2 by... Yes, he's gonna get in on the head scratching, and now we've got dual action head scratching. Oh, was that your skull that I just tattooed with a Wilson logo? Yeah, that's brotherhood. <laughs> 